Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Um, I just wanted to do a quick update video because I'm gonna be transplanting this habanero plant right here from my Arrow Garden Harvest outside. So I kinda wanted to show you a little bit real quick what's going on in here before I do that. So I'll flip the camera around here, okay? moving. Basically here, what I'm gonna do is I have a habanero plant growing in here and obviously in a harvest this only goes up so far and mine's actually limited a little bit more because of this shelf here because I have it like in a coffee bar situation. But I wanted to start it in the arrow garden and then transplant it outside. So I wanted to show you guys real quick before I take it outside it in the arrow garden how bushy it's gotten because I've pruned this well. Unlike my poblano plant, you can see here my bounty. You can see how it's gotten pretty leggy. I'm gonna wait for these flowers to fruit. And then once they're done growing, I'm going to ruthlessly prune this guy back down because he is way taller than the eggplant that's over here. And I wanna keep the garden light about the same height that's optimal for both plants instead of just the having to give the poblano pepper plant room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this outside and I'm gonna pot it outside and let it grow outside because uh, I also have uh, hiding in here some basil hiding right there. And I have two lettuce, this is black seeded Simpson and something else in the back, I can't even see it. And then I also have some thyme in here that's clearly, it's getting really shadowed out. So it's really time to go. So I'll take this out. I'm gonna transplant it outside. And then that'll give me two more pods because this one I just pulled out and left. I think I transplanted this one. I left it open. I don't have a cover. So I just have a little something over it. And I'll probably put, I think I'm going to put two more lettuces because I'm really trying to get the lettuce here going and then also transplant some of that in my veg truck that I put outside a little outdoor herb garden, which I will link that video below. I'm excited about taking some of my lettuce plants and moving them out there so I can expand my lettuce growing besides this harvest and this this one over here because this one has a heirloom tomato plant in it which you can see is just a beast I keep wanting to trim it back so like you know how you see some of those arrow garden people where they have like the plants like this big but it has no leaves but like a billion tomatoes on it I'd like to really try to do that, but so far I did do a lot of trimming and got rid of a lot of leaves on this recently, but it has so many flowers and so many little guys coming in that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait till it stops blooming. And at this point it just won't stop. So if it wants to give me tomatoes, I'm gonna let it give me tomatoes and then I'll hack it off a little bit later. And I probably need to do a root trim because this little guy's like a little behemoth in here. Um, and that's all that's in here. I do have him over here. I should have, I should have moved him here at some point, but he's just so big. It, it's hard to do. So we'll see. Um, it also makes it hard to clean in here cause I, I hate this, but, um, maybe when I get this guy cut, I can kind of clean all up in here a lot better. Um, so anyways, what I'm going to do is I will, next you'll see me, I'll be outside. I will transplant this little guy and then I will come back in and we will put some new seeds in here. Here we go. This is the pot that I'm going to put the little habanero plant in. This is some raised bed organic garden soil. Oh, there's a little froggy. It's okay. That I think I had, I left over from last year and I'm going to just add some, um, I guess, amendment to it. Go forth, little frog. There you go. And it's nice rich soil still. I got my little helper getting my clippers. You got my clippers? Oh. Well, she's getting those. I'm going to add some nutrients to this to kind of help this guy make a jump start. I would add more soil, but I'm trying to save some of it for you know, maybe I will add a little bit more soil. I'm going to go ahead and add some container soil. This will just to raise the level up and give the roots a bit more to get into. And with that, I 
least I, last year I did my own potting mix, but I just wasn't quite sure how well it worked or not. Like if some of the fails were with my, you know, giving my fertilization throughout the year, or if it was with my potting mix to begin with. So this year I'm kind of more, I'm getting some more of like this pre container organic potting mix and seeing how it does. I know it's a little more expensive, but I don't have to buy a whole ton of soil this year. All right, so I'm gonna add a little kelp in here. I don't measure this stuff out, folks, so I'm just gonna add a dash of that in there to, to mix in. And then a dash of fertilizer. Like he has some pretty nice roots here. Let's see if we can get this bottom out without too much damage. I mean, we say that, but honestly, in the arrow garden, we will um, we will trim roots like like here, trim maybe like this much off, a third of it off, um, and it's, the plant's fine. Maybe it's different, obviously, in the ground, but. All right, so we're gonna clip along here. Obviously I can't reuse these little pods if I cut them like this, but that's fine, I got plenty of them. All right, so I cut around there and then I just find the end here, slide it out, pretty simple. And then I could try to go this way, but it might snag too much. And I certainly can't go this way because the plant's too big. So then I'm just going to cut it here. And then this little sponge can go right in the ground with this. So let me get my glove on. It's a beautiful plant. You were coming outside, buddy. Right. He's a bushy little guy, so he is not going to stick up that far yet. All right, we'll give him a good drink of water for the next couple days. And. It should be good and I also typically like this one because it's a pepper plant I'll probably put it out in um in full sun and we're not it's January so it's not like the Florida heat is baking like in June and August June July August um so it's gonna be fine out here in the full sun in January this is actually pretty cool right now but I'm not worried about any frost we might get another cold snap before um the end of February but They'll, I think he'll be fine. He'll be fine. So that's it, guys. Give him a good drink of water in the next couple days, and I will follow up and show you how he does because I think that's probably the second most important part about these transplant videos is I can stick a plant in the ground and be like, yeah, it's transplanted. But let's see how it does over the season. So we'll follow this plant and the eggplant and see how they do. Now I just wanted to follow up with you guys about what I did back in here. I went ahead and I moved my light all the way back down to the lowest setting and I moved my time in the middle here and I put in a Simpson plant and a Marvel of Seasons plant and a Rouge de Hiver another lettuce plant a red lettuce plant 
And so now you can see my basil plant, you can see it fine. You can see my other lettuce plant uh, in the background just fine. And you can see I can now, I can get my, um, get a piece of paper towel, just kind of wipe this area a little bit, gives me a little opportunity to clean it up. Um, I, I'm not the person that like resets the setting or the timer on my air garden every time I put new pods in, or I'm also not the person that will reset the whole garden at once unless I'm doing a deep clean of it. I will have something already going and then pop new ones in and they seem to be successful that way. So you don't always have to grow everything at the same time or wait until your bigger plants are done before you can start something else. As long as they're relatively close within the same range as if I wouldn't try to put like a brand new seed pod in this thing, um, but this one's fine. Even this one's fine because see, it's still at the lowest level. So you can still just kind of keep multitasking, if, especially if you have an outdoor garden or if you're harvesting and you want to know if you can put new pods in. Yes, you can. You can. I wouldn't do it in this one or this big one here for obvious reasons because light's way too high. But in ones where you can have it a bit smaller setting, yes, you can do it. And just to show you, I went ahead and got a paper towel. I just put it like a little um, vinegar water mixture. I'm just gonna clean this up because before, and it just cleans up pretty well. I am heard that this residue can kind of be from the nutrients. I'm not sure, but it's just like a little crust. And you can just, as long as you kind of keep on top of it, I like to just not have my arrow garden look, you know, a little grungy if I can help it. Sometimes you can't really get in there, but when you can, clean it up really nicely and get it going. So that's kind of how you clean that. I just do it with like a water vinegar mixture that I already have for cleaning around the house, which is one third vinegar, two parts water, two thirds um, water. All right, I just went ahead and finished uh, wiping it down. It's a little hard to do when you're holding the, the video camera. But you can see it cleaned up pretty well. I can get back in that corner, but I think it'll be fine until I go to reset it in the future. I wanted to show you the end of this process, how I will grow out these lettuces. I will transplant some of them out to my veg truck, like I said before. And that is the whole process of how I transplant from my arrow garden to my outdoor garden. It's pretty simple. And like I said, I just follow up with some water. This is actually a few days later. So that habanero plant's doing great. My eggplant that I transplanted earlier is doing great. They're both doing great. So we will see in a few months how they continue to do. And I will do update video later. And I'll come back and link it in here. But so far, you know, I have had very successful transplants. Um, that's a process. It's, it's very simple. There's nothing super fancy about it. Um, you could be a little bit more cautious if you wanted to and kind of harden it off for a couple of days and keep it in the shade. Um, I'm a little more winging it here, but so far I haven't had a failure, so I haven't had a reason to be more cautious. But if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please like the video. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions or you learned something that you didn't know, comment below and let me know. And thank you for watching. And if you are an Arrow Garden fanatic or interested in learning more about the Arrow Gardens, uh, subscribe because I will be posting a lot more arrow garden content for you guys because I love I love these things I love the simplicity of them I love the automation of them how the lights turn on and off on their own how it tells you when to add nutrients keep in mind this light is not actually blinking in real life it's just doing it through the camera but I love how I'm confident when um, I'm busy with my life I can still maintain these plants and not kill them <laughs> because you just have to check on it at least every couple days to put water in it and you know make sure it doesn't need nutrients and that's really it that's the bare minimum you can do as much as you want with these things and you can do as little as you want with these things so i think they're great i'm a full-time mom i have a small business and i work full-time so i don't really always have time to be focusing out in my outdoor garden all the time i sometimes have a lot of fails with my outdoor garden because of um, either I'm not giving them the right nutrients or as a beginner gardener, I just don't know what to do and pests and they get at it and can be discouraging. But when I have successes like this, 
and my indoor gardens and my aero gardens. It gives me confidence that I can figure it outside and at least gives me something that's going successful in my gardening experience. So that's, that's my spiel on why I love these things. So if you love them too, or you're more interested in learning, please subscribe. And thank you for watching guys.